Welcome back everyone to the second video in our tutorial series covering Capitalism Lab. In our first video, we took a look at retail and how to set up our very first and most basic department store. And in that department store, we purchased for sale cola, bread, and then finally at the end of the video, we picked up cakes. Now the, three, the one thing that all three of these items have in common is that we're not making any of these three ourselves. The first two of cola and bread we're purchasing from the seaport, which you can see if we click on one of the purchase units and then click on supplier, you can see we're getting these from the seaport. So we're importing these. They're being made abroad and we're simply selling them on the retail market. The final product of cakes, we can see that if we go to the purchasing, our supplier is actually one of our competitors, Victory Group. So we're not making any of these three. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can change that because the real depth of this game is when you get into the product chain. How do we actually make our own products and then sell our own products to market? Because that's where the real money is. If you can control the entire uh, product chain, then from the very beginning, we can control all the raw materials, all the ingredients, and then all the way up through the final product that makes it to market. So we're gonna start here by looking at farms because they are the most basic way to produce our own food. You can also work with factories, but we'll take a look at those since they're a little bit more involved and operate a little bit differently. We're gonna take a look at those in a separate video. So let's go ahead and create our first farm. And we're gonna go ahead and create a large farm. You can see there are two different types here. And in this case, we're not gonna to have to worry about any traffic indexes or anything like that. We're simply worried about the cost of land. Now, for the purposes of the video, I'm gonna keep everything as close together as I can so we can keep it all on uh, the screen at the same time. But you can see as I move around, there are different amounts of land cost, but the building cost stays the same. So why would you wanna put it one place or another? Well, as I mentioned, for the purposes of the video, I'm gonna keep it uh, all together as much as I can. But the reason why you would move things out is so that maybe out farther away, you can get much cheaper land. If you notice here, I can purchase this land for 15.8 million. But if I move out toward the edge, I can get down to 12.8 million. So several million dollars can be saved if you're purchasing land for multiple farms and or factories. So there's definitely the, the cost of the land to be considered. There also the cost of freight. Now I wouldn't worry too much about the cost of freight. If we come back into our department store, you can see cost plus freight is all figured in here. So in very technical terms, you could choose to have uh, your farms and or factories very close by so that you would save money on freight. But for our purposes, we're not gonna to worry too much about that since everything is pretty close overall. All right, so let's go ahead and place our first farm here. Again, very close to our department store. Okay, so we're gonna purchase this land. And now we've got our very familiar three by three grid. Okay, in our retail video, we noticed that we had purchasing and sales and, and different things like that. Let's take a quick look at what we're gonna get into as far as setup items here. We've got advertising, crop growing, livestock raising, livestock processing, inventory, and then finally sales. A couple of these will look very familiar, advertising and sales along with inventory we've seen before. But then we've got some new ones, crop growing, livestock raising, and livestock processing. For the purposes of our video here today, we're gonna to be working strictly with the livestock, but if you want to take a, a quick glimpse at what is available to you on the farming side, I like to use the, the information tab at the very bottom left hand corner and then go to the farmer's guide. Okay, once you go to the farmer's guide, you can see on the left hand side a list of all the crops that are available as well as what products they can be used to create. You can see cocoa, coconut, corn, and so on are their own product in and of themselves. Same with cotton, but you get down to flax, you can see it's used to make, to make flax fiber. And then you've got rubber plant is used to make rubber and so on. So you can see those crops available. For our purposes today, we are going to stick with the livestock side. And you can see we have cattle, chicken, pigs, and sheep. 
And then for each of these, you can see which products are available. And you can see there's a wide selection of products that you can use. For instance, with cattle, you can make frozen beef, milk, and leather. Chicken has two products, the same with pigs, and then sheep have three products available. So you can get uh, quite a bit in depth with using nothing but farms. All right, so let's come back into our farm and let's go ahead and start out. Um, again, I'm not gonna use the top left-hand corner. We're gonna do this manually this time. We are going to raise livestock and then you can see it's gonna ask us which livestock do we wanna raise. For our purposes today, we are going to raise cattle. Okay, and then the next unit we're going to need is livestock processing. Okay, and we're going to connect these two. Now you notice it doesn't ask us which of the three products that are available from cattle that we want to purchase. And that's because we have the game on pause right now. All right, and then we're going to do something a little bit different. Something that a concept that we introduced in the first video talking about retail, and that is everything is not going to be a one to one ratio. We've got so far we're raising livestock, then we're going to process the livestock, and then the natural progression would be to go straight to sales here and then repeat this two more times to fill up our three by three grid. Well, in this case, we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we are going to repeat the grid for the purposes of. The first two parts of it, let's go ahead and select cattle here as well. And then finish off with livestock processing. And of course, we have our connections between each of the two. So now we're all set on that part. But remember, we have to sell this somewhere. We have to ship our product somewhere. And so how are we going to do that? Well, we need a sales department. And I'm going to put one right in the middle. And the reason I'm going to do that is simply the ratio of what we need based on the utilization. And we'll see how that all works together here momentarily. And for those purposes, I'm going to start out by only making the one connection. So we have one complete unit here in the center and the other two units are not complete. And I'm going to hit five to make the time go by again. You don't have to necessarily use five. In fact, if, once you're playing the game, I would advise against using five and trying to stick to one or two in general, uh, just so that the game lasts longer and you have time to make more decisions without so much time passing. All right, so I'm gonna press five to speed up the game, and then I'm gonna immediately stop it. Now you notice that nothing's happened, and that's because we haven't chosen which product that we wanna process yet. So if this happens to you, don't worry too much about it. This is why I would advise against using a very uh, fast passage of time. So you notice we haven't selected a product, so now let's go in. We're gonna select, for our purposes, frozen beef. And we're gonna do the same thing all the way down. Oops, here we forgot to select our cattle. So we'll have to, let me turn on time one more time very quickly so that we can now come in and select our product again. Okay, so now I'm gonna let the time run just very quickly. And you notice that we only have the one section working. Let's take a quick look. Utilization, 100%. Utilization, 94%. 100%, 94%, 100%, 94 All right, so you can see these two are very much a one-to-one -one ratio. For every livestock raising unit we have, we're going to need one processing unit to go with it. But then we come to sales. When I click on sales right now, you can notice, wait a minute, why is it at zero? Well, that's because we're not doing anything with the product. We don't have any of our stores selling it. And for our pur purposes right now, no, uh, none of our competitors are buying the product from us to sell. So we're going to need to set up this product in our department store. Now we could set up a new department store, but for our purposes, we're going to stick with what we already have in place. And we have just the opportunity here with the cakes. Remember we talked about how with the cakes last time, if we click here, you can see we've got a price agreement because we're purchasing these from one of our competitors. Well, we're gonna fix that now. We're no longer gonna be selling cakes because we don't wanna purchase and help out our competitors by making more profit for them. So we are going to click on the purchase segment for cakes, click on the link, and now I'm gonna change the suppliers to, to be our company. And you can see, here we go. Here is the frozen beef that we are currently making 
on our farm. I'm going to double click there. And now we are making frozen beef. And here in just a moment, the sales will change from the cakes to the frozen beef. Turn on the time for just a moment. And you can see that the sales department swaps back over. All right, now, now we're ready to come back over to our farm. And you notice that we forgot to do something. One of the first things I talked about in our retail store video is training. Okay, notice how everything is level one and it's going to continue to stay level one because we're not doing any training. Training is very important because if we come back in now that we can look at frozen beef, you can see we have no brand and our quality is just a baseline number of 30. Well, we want to increase the quality and the way we're going to increase the quality is through training. We're going to have better staff making a better product. So we're going to see this quality number increase as time goes on. All right, so now our training is maxed out. So these ones will quickly turn into twos and threes and so forth as we move forward. So taking a quick look back through our utilization, once again, we're at or very close to 100% for the cattle raising and cattle processing units that we have. But if we look at our sales, you can see we're only at 16% here. We have quite a bit of room left for these purposes. Well, that's why I didn't put anything in th these two areas. What we're going to do is we're actually going to make a connection here. Okay, I'm going to connect this processing unit down with this sales unit, and I'm going to do the same thing for this processing unit by clicking on the connections and doing it that way. So we're going to see this 16% increase as well as the quantity that is going to be offered for sale in our retail store. Once again, I'm going to turn on the time for just a few moments. And now you can see we're up to 27%. Now, unfortunately, that's really all we can do as far as utilization for this sales unit for our farm because we're maxed out on everything else. Okay, so there's really, we're, we're pretty much doing all that we can do with this farm unit. Now, we'll come back to these two empty spaces in just a moment. But now you can see we're up to 27% and we are maxing out everything we can do. Now, this, these numbers will continue to change as our training takes effect. But let's come back over to the department store. All right, right now we need to look and we can see that our quantity continues to rise. Okay, so we're up to 450,000 on quantity right now. And a couple of things that we want to look at. Okay, we've got a, a farm that is making entirely one product. Okay, an entire farm is devoted to one product, which is, in this case, frozen beef. All right, so what we want to do is say, okay, we have one entire farm devoted to this product. What does that give us as far as market share? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the time a little bit, and I'm going to let this start to... Wow, you can see... The quantity, okay, so the quantity, I think, is going to start to level out in here. And that's never going to be just a flat line. But you can see it's starting to level out. So we're at 660,000, and the quantity is starting to level out. You can see we're making a nice little profit, 460,000. And our rating, not bad, okay? We're a little bit ahead of the competitors, which, as we took a look at in our retail video that's what we want we want to make sure that our overall rating is higher than our competitors by how much will be up to you and that depends on whether you want to try to dominate the market or maximize profit and so on so we're not going to get back into that what we want to look at here is our market share and you can see that we are the green the lighter green and we are most definitely dominating the market right now in fact we have probably a good three quarters of the market at this point so what this tells us is with one farm, we can basically provide all of the frozen beef needs for the market. Now, we could try to go after the entire and have 100% of the market share, but for our purposes, that's really not uh, going to be very efficient for us. So we know that with our one farm completely dedicated to frozen beef, we are able to not only dominate the market, but also provide most all of the supply that the market needs. So we're in good shape there. That's where we want to be. Our ratings are good. Everything is awesome there. 
Let's come back over to our farm. Now, we do have a couple of more empty slots. Now, we could choose to leave these empty, but let's not do that. There's a couple of things that we can do. If you remember, we had advertising, inventory, and sales as additional slots. Now, we haven't used um, the advertising or inventory here. Obviously, we've got our sales taken care of. We're using that as optimally as we can. So this time, let's go ahead and select inventory. Okay, so why would you want to use inventory here? Well, inventory gives you the ability to store additional product. And in cases of any sort of disruptions, uh, because some of the setup options for the game will involve disruptions from time to time in the game flow. So this would be a way to prepare for that. You can see if we click on the sales unit, we have a current stock of almost 320,000. And then there's some small amount of stock in each of the processing units, but not a large amount. So what we want to do here is we're going to set up an inventory to sort of a rainy day fund here so that if something happens and our processing and or cattle raising is disrupted for a small period of time, we'll have some inventory to continue our sales uninterrupted. Okay, so for that, we're going to need to connect it into some processing. Now, we're not going to be able to connect it to all three of the processing. So we're going to click on our connections. And now we want to have the connections go this way. And we're also going to connect this way. So we're going to sp speed up time once again. And now you can see that we're starting to get a little stock. Now, we're not going to get a whole lot of stock. And the reason we're not going to get a whole lot of stock is because we are selling everything we're making currently on retail. OK, but this will allow you to account for small fluctuations. So that's another idea. Again, it's not something I use a whole lot. I actually have a different way of accounting for inventory, but we're going to look at that in the warehousing in a different video. But this is indeed an option for you. Another option to use for this slot would be advertising. OK, if we come back out and go back over to our department store. You see that our brand is zero. OK, because we're not doing any advertising whatsoever. And we're not talking so much about branding and advertising in this particular video. But just know that we do have the option because we have space for it to advertise this particular product. So let's go ahead and set up an advertising link. Then we're going to link it to a media. And this gives us, again, without going into you know, a terrible amount of detail on this, for our purposes, what we're looking at are two things. OK, we're going to be looking at rating points and then the CPM, OK, which is our advertising cost. And simply put, you want to get the highest number you can for rating points and the lowest number you can for advertising cost. Now, it's not going to be uh, necessarily a right and wrong answer. We have three options. We have newspaper, TV and radio. All right. So I noticed that newspaper is the highest. As far as rating points with radio station very close behind and then finally with the TV station. But something you notice very quickly is the TV station is the most expensive to advertise with. So really either the newspaper or the radio station, either one would be a good option. I'm actually just going to leave it at the newspaper. And then you notice that once we choose the newspaper, we've got a monthly spending budget. All right, so we're going to go ahead and leave that at 100 grand. But again, you're going to want to manage this based off of how much money you're making on this particular product. OK, in our cases, we, we know that if we come back in, as far as profit, we're making 480,000 per month in profit. So we're probably not going to want to leave this at 100,000 unless it can generate at least 100,000 more in profits by doing so. But for the purposes of our video and our instruction here, we're going to leave this at 100 grand and we're going to watch how this changes going forward. All right. So everything is now set up completely for our farm. We have our basic items that we're going to need, which are the livestock raising and the processing, three of each of those. And then we have our one sales. That's what we absolutely have to have. And then you have the option of adding an inventory and advertising as you see fit. OK, so now we're going to now that we have that in place, we're going to move time along. And then we're going to start to see how things get affected. No, wait a minute. Nothing is changing 
on our brand. I wonder why that is. Well, let's come back into the farm and look, and you notice that our advertising is not connected with, with anything. Okay, so it's sort of sitting by itself, not doing anything because it's not connected with anything. So we're going to make the simple connection to our sales department. And now they know what they're advertising. They're advertising frozen beef. Okay, now let's try this again. We're going to turn time on. And suddenly you see our brand is now increasing. All right, now we have a brand of 18. Now we have the option of keeping up because you can see that our competition, which again, we dominate this market, but this keeps us by doing advertising, this keeps us ahead of our competition. So it's another way you can increase quality, you can increase the brand, or you can increase both. And then long-term, it may give you an opportunity to increase your prices. Now, for our purposes, you can see our profit is not going up by a terrible amount. So it's probably not going to be worth it for frozen beef for us, but on other products and other situations, it definitely could be. All right, so that is our basic look at the farm. Again, keep in mind your grid, how you want to set up your grid. Also keep in mind your ratio of only needing one sales department to the cattle raising, cattle processing, and then keep in options Keep in mind your options for advertising and inventory. So we'll come back next time and we'll look at factories, which share a lot in common with the farms, but also will serve as the next step in our process of dominating the retail sector. Thank you very much for joining me and stay tuned for more Capitalism Lab.